Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ketki, and we at Kotak Securities welcome you to today's session on how to choose your first stock to invest. This will be followed by an extensive question and answer round by the end of the session. So now, without any further delay, let me introduce you to our speaker of the evening, Piyush Chitlangya, founder of Pinchiksha. Piyush has been in the financial service industry for the past 13 years and has extensive exposure to equity research and financial modeling along with conducting trainings workshops in the capital market domain he is a cfa charter holder and alumnus of iim calcutta and mnit jaipur prior to fin shiksha he worked as an equity analyst and a fund and fund manager at elegro capital advisors he has trained nearly 15000 participants across organization Piyush has done multiple classroom and webinar sessions with highest rated feedbacks for employees and franchisees of Kotak Securities in the last couple of years. His core areas of interest are equity valuation, derivatives, and financial statement analysis. So, please, guys, uh, join me in welcoming Piyush. Uh, so, we can now start off with the webinar. Thanks, Ketiki. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, glad to be here. Pleasure uh, to be a part of this session. I'll just take a minute to share my screen. and you can just confirm if that works fine and also quickly hi hi everyone welcome uh, to the session glad to be here i'll just quickly present my screen and you could let me know if that is working fine are we able to view this yes sir perfect so good evening everyone thank you uh, for uh, being a part of this session uh, pleasure uh, conducting this session uh, during the course of the day today we are going to uh, talk about how do we go about uh, starting and choosing our first stock for investing and what is it that we should be looking at uh, there will be uh, a q and a session towards the end as ketiki has mentioned so uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to right away dive into the presentation and uh, start with our discussions uh, for the duration of the presentation i'm going to keep my webcam off uh, more from the perspective of uh, you know the idea that there's no bandwidth challenge or anything that kind of crops up and uh, rest of it i think would be uh, broadly self explanatory and straightforward so without much ado i will be getting into the presentation yeah okay so uh the question that comes to our mind when we are starting investing or we are planning to start with investing is how do i go and choose the first stock right how do i really dip into the stock markets as such i will also leave this while the topic says your first stock for investing i'll also probably uh, you know in the interest of people who may have already invested uh in the markets in the past i will keep this a little bit open ended in terms of you know how do you really choose a stock in the first place right what should be the modus operandi what should be the mechanism what are the risk factors when you are investing in stocks and uh, how do you mitigate those risk factors when you are looking at uh, at uh, investing as such from a medium to longer uh, longer period perspective uh one of the interesting things that has happened is you know last one year has been fascinating in the markets and uh, depending on where uh, we invested and in what sectors we invested at what point of time starting the beginning of 2020 uh if we have been investing we would have felt that either investing is too easy or it is too difficult right depending on humne kahan pe investment shuru kiya tha and hamara kya experience raha hai with uh, with various stocks various sectors we would have had a completely different experience with respect to uh, with respect to markets the idea here is to have a broad framework that allows us to establish how do i go about looking at stocks right so that's the that's the key uh, concept we are going to look at uh, we've already spoken about uh, finchiksha and myself uh, i would however want to use a disclaimer that none of the examples that we are discussing here are to be used as an advice or a recommendation to invest or not invest in a particular sector or a stock we'll be talking about some sectors we'll be talking about some examples uh this is not uh, an advice to to basically go and buy those stocks or sell those stocks from your portfolio right please do your research before uh, you go ahead and do that uh the second bit is i am an external entity here so i am uh, i run this organization finchiksha and uh, so consequently 
you know, my opinions could be my own opinions and they may not uh, necessarily be uh, those of what, you know, the Kotak research would be giving to you. With that in mind, let's begin with broader philosophy of investing. There are broadly two methods of investing, you know, broadly. You could either do something called as a top-down investing, in which particular case you start from the top you look at a macro environment. So you look at, let's say, economics. Then you go about looking at an economic policy and then you see, okay, within the economic policy, what sectors could benefit. So you go from there to the sectors. And there from the sectors, you start going to the company within the sector. Right? So your, your movement is from top to bottom. First, you will go and look at, okay, is the Indian economy doing well? what is really doing well within the economy so what sectors are expected to do well and then within the sectors what companies are doing well that's a top-down philosophy of investing the bottom-up uh, investing mechanism is where you start with a company or a business idea directly you could generally look at a company and say i like this company right let me now do more details and analysis about it so maybe you were uh, getting your home painted and you saw that okay asian paint seems to be like everywhere and I want to do a research on Asian paints. Maybe you just came across a smallish company uh, in a particular area and said, okay, I think uh, this is an interesting company. Let me do more research on this. So in this particular case, the company analysis takes the center stage. That's a bottom-up investing mechanism. The bet is typically on the company and management, regardless of what is happening on the macro environment. Right? On top of this analysis, you can check macro themes. That is fine. But when you're doing bottom-up investing, uh, you are basically saying that I bet on the company and I don't care, you know, whether the economy is doing great or not doing great. I think some companies will do well, regardless of what happens to the economy, right? For example, if something is really, uh, let's say India's growth is slowing down, Infosys and TCS may not necessarily get impacted by that because bulk of their business comes from outside India. So in bottom-up investing, you're basically choosing the stock idea directly and working with that. Of course, this requires a little bit better sort of research ability. And, uh, you know, the risks are also higher because you are you're basically going and saying that, you know, I don't care what happens to the economy. So I wouldn't recommend this right away when you're starting investing. It's much simpler to understand and comprehend the top-down investing mechanism, right? Which is we understand what's happening on the economic phenomenon We and you move, move from there. So in today's session, we are going to talk more about the top-down investment approach right we have macro environment so we will look at what's happening with the economy at any given point of time we will and then dip into industry analysis and say okay what kind of industries could do well in this kind of a particular macroeconomic environment and then from there ideally you go towards company analysis right now of course the detailed uh, research is uh, is something that takes a lot of time and so might be beyond the scope of this session itself, but the framework is what we are going to talk about, right? Let's take an example around this. Right now, for example, you could argue that, uh, okay, interest rates are expected to remain low, right? So interest rates are low and in this environment, I think the rate sensitive sectors will do well. Uh, you know, RBI is not going to increase interest rates globally. Also, US, Europe, none of the central banks are really increasing interest rates. So if interest rates are going to remain low, there is generally going to be liquidity that is going to be available. Liquidity being available typically creates a bunch of uh, things that happen. One, your interest rate sensitive sectors right? What are interest rate sensitive sectors? Consehota interest rate sensitive sectors. Joby sectors, jinme ki interest rate kam hone pe, if the rate is going down, uh, if your demand phenomenon plays well, those are interest rate sensitive sectors. So for example, interest rate sensitive sectors would include the like of banks, it'll include the likes of auto, it'll include the likes of real estate, right? These are sectors that typically do well when interest rates are going down, right? So, these are sectors that you may want to kind of look at. Second, when liquidity chases a lot of assets, typically you see that asset prices go up. Right? Now, asset prices kya hai? Commodities are assets, for example. So, commodity prices start going up. Right? If you markets ko thoda sa follow kar rahe hai to aapne dekha hoga ki suddenly uh, in the last month, month and a half, you have seen massive move in commodity stocks. 
right and commodities again can be broken down into multiple pieces we'll we'll go we'll look at that now once you have done that you go further and say acha now let me decide that real estate is doing well or let me say that auto is doing well or let me say that banks are doing well now within this context what companies do i look at within the sector there could be sub sectors so within auto you could go and say okay i think two wheelers will do better than four wheelers or maybe tractors will do better than all of them right and again i can come from a macro environment where i'm saying low rate scenario plus macro economically from the budget perspective there is going to be agri spending india mein rates low hain aur agriculture pe spending government ki taraf se zyada hone wala hai so i could argue that within all these sectors that are there i would tend to think that maybe tractors will do the best right ab tractor kaun se companies banate hain india mein who are the companies that basically make tractors and tillers so you could go and then look at doing a company analysis on this one theme and let me write this theme down here from a company analysis perspective you could look at mnm you could look at i think escorts you could look at companies like vst tillers who are all in tractors and tillers which are related to agri as a theme correct if you suggest that two wheelers are going to do well and within two wheelers again you can break down and say ki acha i think uh, some of the some of the larger ones will do well or some of the smaller ones will do well uh, is two wheeler an export story or an indian story based on that i will look at things i can look at electric vehicles within four wheelers i can look at some some companies there could be commercial vehicles so i can decide based on that similarly agar hum real estate ko lete hain jaise maan lijiye humne kaha real estate will do well right now within real estate i can go and check okay what are the companies that are existing i can check let's say there is a dlf there is a godrej properties right there is sobha developers there is uh, oberoi realty you could argue there are various players right now within this you could uh, you could do a discussion okay which region in india do you think uh, real estate would do well right and again i will repeat there is no uh this is not a recommendation to invest but real estate typically does well when a particular location gets a lot of jobs right kisi ek city mein agar bahut sare jobs generate ho rahe hain to wahan ka real estate typically is expected to do well right now look at india's ecosystem startups make a lot of money this year startups have been getting a lot of money again driven by liquidity global liquidity hai to startups mein funding ho raha hai startup ecosystem india ka sabse bada is in bangalore right so all all of the major startups in india are likely to basically set up a shop there right and they're already there some of them are there some of them might kind of expand so there is going to be a job creation boom that is going to come in in that city where you are seeing this uh, this kind of a startup boom driven by liquidity or funding in startups startups are funding ho rahi hai wahan pe jobs generate ho rahe hain mainly india ka startup hub bangalore hai bangalore mein bahut jobs hone wale hain so any real estate player that is probably in bangalore might be expected to do better in terms of their financial numbers right this is so far we have not done any research hum sirf top down analysis karke dekh rahe hain ki kya ye possibility exist karti hai right from a broader macro perspective it is quite possible ki aisa zaruri nahi hai ki ho it is quite possible ki iske against ek phenomenon kaam kar raha hai which is work from home right because of the entire corona virus pandemic what has happened is work from home has become a norm so you know you could argue that companies might recruit and their offices might be in bangalore but unko chahiye hi nahi ki employee bangalore mein ho employee kahin bhi ho sakta hai in which case this theme doesn't work the question we have to then answer ab hamare paas do questions hain pehla question ye hai ki hame ye answer karna hai ki kya ye thesis correct hai is a certain amount of job that uh, is getting created is that being created in bangalore hyderabad some of these cities and what could be the potential impact of work from home right based on that you could go ahead and then dig into individual company analysis so that's that's a couple of examples that you could look at with respect to you know top down investment approach and how do you go looking at the macro environment linking that to industry analysis and then to company analysis of course jab aap company ka analysis karenge to is example ke upar aapko dekhna padega ki company ke company ke financials kaise hain right um uh, do they have a lot of debt for example bahut borrowing to nahi kar rakha unhone right then you have to look at company ke valuations kaise hain kya already ye agar main baat kar raha hu aur aap baat kar rahe hain to ye obviously sabko pata hai right is isme kuch naya news to hai nahi so it's quite possible ki uh, markets ko bhi iske bare mein idea hoga 
और अगर मार्केट्स को इसके बारे में आइडिया होगा तो क्वाइट पॉसिबल है कि वैल्यूएशन इज ऑलरेडी प्राइसिंग इट इन आपका ऑलरेडी एक वैल्यूएशन उन स्टॉक्स का होगा अगर आप रियल स्टेट स्टॉक्स देख रहे हैं दे आर डूइंग वेल दैट्स प्रोबेबली ऑलरेडी बिकॉज दे आर प्राइसिंग इन दिस काइंड ऑफ अ ग्रोथ so these are some of the factors that you have to keep in mind when you are going down doing this approach it develops with time of course uh, aap jaise jaise is pe practice karte chalenge aap ye themes ko padhna shuru karenge aapko aapko idea lagta jayega aur aap dheere dheere us pe aur expert hote jayenge uh, but the idea is that that process needs to be repeated you should be clear with how do you really create an investment thesis or an investment case for any particular company or any particular sector right Up, let's start with the first point there, which is linking the macro environment to study. Can the macro economic environment give me an understanding about how to invest? Can it help us identify opportunities to invest for the long term? Can any examples give this indication? अगर मैं इंडिया के मैक्रो इकोनॉमिक एनवायरमेंट को चेक करता हूँ, तो क्या उस एनवायरमेंट को देखके हमें पता चल सकता है कि there are investment opportunities that are available in the economy, right? And I can I can keep talking about it in terms of you know. variety of examples that have played out let's take a few examples and understand i'll take them one by one so the first example is something on india's balance of payments balance of payments in very simple terms is dollar inflow versus dollar outflow theek hai iske do components hain there are two components of this one is trade the other is investment right trade is import export so import versus export and investment is investment in india like fii plus fdi investment right and investment outside india by indians right if an indian goes and buys a factory or a land or a you know business in dubai then that's basically the other way around money is going out of india right ab अगर आप ये देखेंगे तो हिस्टोरिकली हिस्टोरिकली वॉट इज हैपेंड इज यहां पे वी हैव हैड अ डेफिसिट एंड दिस इज कॉमनली कॉल्ड एज करेंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट आपने सुना होगा ये टर्म कैड करेंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड अबाउट इट राइट सो हिस्टोरिकली इंडियाज इंपोर्ट्स हैव बीन ग्रेटर देन आवर एक्सपोर्ट्स Right, even today, our imports are greater than our exports, and I'll give you a broad breakdown of that as well as we go along. And on the other side, what we have is this amount. This thing is usually a surplus, which is why we are dependent on FII and FDI flows, because otherwise, ये match नहीं करेगा equation. Dollar बाहर जाएंगे पर अंदर नहीं आएंगे. तो अभी अगर हम इंपोर्ट ज्यादा कर रहे हैं एक्सपोर्ट से तो हमें डॉलर्स की जरूरत है वी नीड डॉलर्स इफ वी आर इंपोर्टिंग मोर देन वी आर एक्सपोर्टिंग सो टेक्निकली दैट हैज टू बी एंड वी कैंट प्रिंट डॉलर्स हम प्रिंट नहीं कर सकते उनको तो दोज डॉलर्स हैव टू कम थ्रू सम मैकेनिज्म आई दर एफ आई आई इन्वेस्टमेंट और एफ डी और एन आर आई रेमिटेन समथिंग हैज टू हैपन राइट हिस्टोरिकली ये सीन ऐसा ही रहा है और इसलिए हमारा डिपेंडेंस एफ आई आई पे बहुत ज्यादा रहा है अब इसमें दो और छोटे छोटे इनपुट्स हैं विच आर रेलिवेंट वन इज आवर इम्पोर्ट्स बल्क ऑफ आवर इम्पोर्ट आर ऑयल इम्पोर्ट वेन एस ए बल्क एटलीस्ट हमारा जो इम्पोर्ट बिल है उसका रफली ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑयल पे जाता है राइट नाउ वी कैंट सब्सटीट्यूट ऑयल इम्पोर्ट ऑयल तो हम बनाते नहीं है हमारे कंट्री में ऑयल है ही नहीं हमें ऑयल इम्पोर्ट ही करना पड़ेगा सो वेन वी इम्पोर्ट ऑयल दैट बिकम्स अ बिग चंक एंड वी कैंट रियली रिप्लेस इट राइट द अदर बिग इम्पोर्ट फॉर इंडिया आर गोल्ड एंड आई कम टू दर्ड वन इन अट राइट ये दो बड़े इंपोर्ट्स हैं अब अगर मैं नंबर्स देखूं ब्रॉडली तो 2020 छोड़ दीजिए फाइनेंशियल ईयर 20 21 छोड़ दीजिए 2020 का अगर मैं नंबर देखूंगा तो इसको हम ब्रेक डाउन कर देते हैं इन टू पार्ट्स अगेन इंपोर्ट्स एंड एक्सपोर्ट्स को सबसे पहले हम मैन्युफैक्चरिंग पे चले जाते हैं राइट right? सो so अगर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग देखूंगा मैं तो हमारे एक्सपोर्ट्स जो हैं वो रफली थ्री बिलियन डॉलर के आसपास होंगे और हमारे इंपोर्ट्स जो हैं वो अप्रोक्सीमेट अप्रोक्सीमेटली 480 से 500 बिलियन डॉलर के आसपास होंगे अप्रोक्सीमेटली ठीक है तो यहां पे हमें 180 बिलियन डॉलर का एक नेट नेगेटिव नंबर दिख रहा है राइट सर्विसेज एक्सपोर्ट्स हमारे जो हैं 
वो एक्सपोर्ट्स और इंपोर्ट्स का मैं डिफरेंस देखूंगा तो कुछ प्लस एट्टी बिलियन डॉलर दिखेगा राइट लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड दिस अगेन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इंपोर्ट्स वर्सेस एक्सपोर्ट्स आवर इंपोर्ट्स आर ग्रेटर देन आवर एक्सपोर्ट्स सो हम नेट एक बिलियन डॉलर वन बिलियन डॉलर वी सेंड आउट ऑफ इंडिया एवरी ईयर सर्विसेज आई सर्विसेज एटसेट्रा our exports are greater than imports so the net number of you know exports minus imports is plus 80 billion dollar so the net of our total trade balance is about 100 billion dollars correct now think about opportunities that can come i'll go back to the previous slide which is this slide and let's think about uh, think about this macro environment we import more right the interesting part is hamara teesra sabse bada import hai electronics television refrigerator mobile phones even though mobile phones now are being made in india uh, a lot of it is assembled in india bulk of it is basically the components are imported essentially right so as people grow in life as people have more money to invest obviously they will import things demand badega main air conditioner khareedunga main tv khareedunga main refrigerator khareedunga ye sab import honge because hum india mein we don't manufacture a lot of these or we did not manufacture a lot of these till some years ago and as a government you can't stop people from importing this right and this is like in a way if you think about it this is a big problem because you will have people will keep growing people will keep earning and so consequently they will keep uh, buying these products if they keep buying these products hamara imports or exports ka equation bigadta jayega it will keep getting worse right so you have to do some sort of an import substitution so your theme is import substitution right now with an import substitution what is your theme uh you want you can't do anything about oil to be honest so till the time we don't have electric vehicles we will continue to rely on oil so that can't be done gold again i think the government tries to restrict it but wo hota nahi hai because there is a relevance of gold for the last 5000 years and it is very difficult to change human behavior around gold right so import substitution has to happen on electronics so consequently contract manufacturing or any kind of manufacturing of electronics should do well this was a very clear theme ye pichle 5 saal se evident problem thi ki at some point of time the government will have to come and say that we have to we have to manufacture electronics in india right so let's make policy that is useful ab agar policy useful hone wali hai if you are going to create a good policy for this in that industry then you have to identify who are the existing companies who exist in terms of that production can they actually benefit out of it right one classic example i will repeat once again uh, one classic example of this uh, is uh, a couple of companies called uh, pixan technologies and amber enterprises Dixon is uh, one of India's largest manufacturers of uh, LED TVs, LED bulbs, mobile phones. In fact, Panasonic ka uh, bulk of the Panasonic TVs get uh, made by Dixon. Almost 60% of branded LED bulbs in India are actually manufactured by Dixon. Whoever the end end company is, Crompton Greaves hai ya Philips hai ya Vipro hai, kafi saare customers inse hi banwate hain. They are contract manufacturers there. Uh, it's a low margin business because they are basically going to just do a cost plus markup and give it to all these entities but it is a business which will see good policy making right and i'll just skip a few slides because i had a small slide on dixon's stock price it listed somewhere in 2018 and this is obviously adjusted for uh, the split uh, that uh, it has done recently um, and if you see the stock was actually available at somewhere in the range of 300 to 400 to invest for a fair bit of time in between right below 500 for a fair bit of time and right now the stock is at 4000 rupees right and uh, again i would i would strongly recommend that this is not a recommendation to go and buy this tomorrow because maybe now the valuation kept captures everything right we don't know but purely as a theme if you knew that this theme exists then there is a possibility that you will see that uh, 
this macroeconomic theme of India's balance of payments would help you understand what is going to play out there. Right, what is going to happen with respect to uh, with respect to this uh, segment as you look at it? Right, let's look at some other uh, themes. That's the first theme example of top down investing linking macro environment to investing. Right, look at the second example: coronavirus and its global impact. Now we are in unprecedented times. Hamara, apna India mein at this point of time there is a very major uh, wave that is going on, and I hope all of us are keeping safe. Uh, this is a scary wave, and I'm sure. Uh, um everybody and their known ones now uh, at least in the known circles you would have seen the impact at this point of time uh, what this kind of a event does is it changes perceptions of people and governments towards a lot of industries a lot of sectors right at this point of time who's saving us from this entire uh, problem there are basically the segments that save us are healthcare and pharma अगर इस समय हमारे पास एग्जिस्टिंग वैक्सीन तैयार होता इसका या वैक्सीन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कैपेबिलिटी तैयार होती इसकी तो हाउ हाउ ग्रेटफुल वी वुड हैव बीन कितना कितना अच्छा रहता अगर ये तैयार होता सब कुछ राइट जब एक बार पैंडेमिक आता है उसके बाद ऑब्वियसली इट इज गोइंग टू टेक टाइम and hats off to all these pharma companies that they've still been able to actually do something about it in in a smallish span of time uh when we had started thinking about when will the vaccine come honestly the first thoughts that uh, that were being thrown around were like 5 se 8 saal mein vaccine aayega right usse pehle vaccine nahi aayega so it is remarkable that uh, companies globally and in india have been able to work and sort of do this research and come up with uh, with this idea of uh, coming out with vaccine i know there are sort of uh, controversies going around in terms of production in terms of you know pricing and all of that we do need to remember something with respect to these industries of pharma and healthcare right there is a concept of operating expense and there's a com- concept of capital expense right pharma has a huge amount of capital expense हमें ये पता चलता है कि एक नया मेडिसिन डेवलप हो गया है उस मेडिसिन को बनाने का कॉस्ट मान लीजिए सौ रुपए है और उसको बेचने का कॉस्ट दो सौ रुपए है आर्ग्यूमेंट से क्या दस रुपए है और बीस रुपए है जो भी आप मानना चाहें बट जो कैपिटल एक्सपेंस और जो रिसर्च हुआ है उस पर विच माइट हैव टेकन टेन ईयर्स बिफोर दिस राइट टिपिकली फार्मा ड्रग्स दैट कम आउट द मेडिसिन दैट वी हैव मोस्ट ऑफ दम हैव हिस्ट्री ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ रिसर्च विच इज आर एन डी most companies spend a lot of amount on r&d hoping that they are able to kind of recover this at a later point of time if you don't allow them to recover this money they will stop doing r&d you can't force people to do r&d right historically governments have always pushed pharma companies to you know sort of control you know pricing india has a pricing act which controls us has a pricing act us tries to control as well uh what there's a thin line there obviously you don't want companies profiteering a lot but uh, you do need to realize that if tomorrow you have to develop a drug for let's say uh, let's say a disease like alzheimers right or uh, uh, you know some of these cancers that exist who's going to put money to research if you are not going to allow them to make money eventually right so what this pandemic has done the global impact of this pandemic is that the healthcare system and pharma system has kind of come to the forefront whatever happens you are likely to see good benign policy making policies that basically help you create infrastructure both in terms of healthcare and in pharma india mein khas taur pe hospital and testing ka infrastructure should develop dramatically fast after this episode because that's what we realized after this that you know uh, if we had that infrastructure available with us we would not have seen this kind of a problem right so these are themes that come out unfortunately of course you know we had to live through this pandemic globally and you know india is honestly touch wood uh, we are far better managed if we look at com- countries like let's say brazil and all there is there's a lot more trouble that is going on there in terms of uh, you know the numbers middle east some of the countries have had a lot of trouble 
uh, Iran has had multiple waves, for example. Turkey has had in, in Europe multiple waves that have come in. A lot of countries in Europe have uh, have suffered a lot uh, in the first and second wave uh, around this. So what is likely to happen is you will see that the pharma segment, and I'll again move a little bit further here. You see this here, right? This is the Nifty Pharma Index. Right? Again, not a recommendation to go and buy pharma stocks right away. Just to show you that, you know, how do these themes work? Pharma did very well between 2012 and 2015. Then for a long period of time between 2015 and 2020, it did not do as well. Index was at 14,000. It went down to 7,000. Less than that, actually. When the pandemic started. Then immediately as the lockdown got announced, the first sector that moved and look at the price move here. This was around 6,500. Within a month, this was at about 9,000, right? That's a 40% return. And that's not even a month, right? This was the first sector to start moving. And the reason this sector started moving was that top-down wise, you would expect that globally, pharma companies would now be at the forefront. There were obviously other things that happened during this, this period, which is the India-China tussle happened. The world wanted to reduce its dependence on China. So technically, India becomes the pharma powerhouse of the world. In fact, there was a statement, I think, last week somewhere in the in the news where European countries were saying, uh, one of the European uh, country premiers was saying that, you know, uh, India should not have been allowed to become the pharma powerhouse of the world. Now, that's basically like saying China should not have been allowed to become the metals powerhouse of the world. You can say that, but then you are also accepting that India is the pharma powerhouse. And we need to understand that, that, you know, in the in the ongoing phase, where can this manufacturing happen, right? If there is one country that can do it, that is India at this point of time at scale. And if you read all the comments around it, everybody is saying that, you know, capability of manufacturing medicines is going to go up dramatically in India. And suddenly, the global industry with respect to Indian pharma has warmed up a little bit. And that's what we are seeing, right? That's your second theme here. The third theme here is commodity prices and their impact on India. Now, this works two ways, remember. And again, I will, I will speak with respect to another example here. When you have liquidity in global markets, liquidity is a lot of money flow. Sub countries may interest rate come hai, bahut paisa chase kar hai markets ko. There's a lot of printing of money that is happening. That liquidity results in uh, a lot of money flow. And that money flow eventually results in, it finds its way in commodity prices. Right? Because inflation ka expectation hota hai. Inflation ka expectation hai, aapka inflation hedge commodities hai. You want to, you know, sort of hedge yourself against commodities. And consequently, if you understand that liquidity is going to stay, that money flow is going to stay and inflation is going to come in, then your only hedge is commodity prices and commodity stocks. And what you're seeing around you is, is just a play of that. Now, the problem, of course, is that one stock goes up four times, five times, six times. It is difficult to understand risk reward in that. When a stock is at 20, it can go down 20 but the upside is is open. But when it suddenly goes from 20 to 100 in a period of 8 months or 9 months, now if you go wrong, you buy this at 100 and you go wrong, you could see it at 60. You don't buy it, you could see it at 150. Kuch bhi ho sakta hai, right? So it becomes difficult in terms of understanding. But that's another theme that, you know, if right in the middle of last year, you had realized that global central banks are going to keep interest rates low, that means liquidity will remain high. That means money flow will remain high. That means commodities had to do well. There was no other mechanism around it. Now the problem is, of course, you don't know where you are in that cycle, right? If you see inflation going up, it is quite possible that global central banks start saying that, okay, we are going to increase interest rates now at some point. When that happens, you could see a sharp, uh, sharp reaction to that as well. But the idea is that think of what are your themes over the next 8-10 years. Position yourself in those themes. If you're able to position yourself in those themes, you'll find what industries would do well. You'll find what companies can do well. And then do and reach that those numbers. It will make investing much simpler, more logical, rather than just me asking my friend and saying, okay, what should I invest in? I can think about, okay, this is happening in the country. Mein, toh, Konse segments ko is benefit hone wala hai. Konse segments ke benefit se 
you know how do things play out after that right so what what uh, what industries do well within those industries what companies do well and then i start tracking those companies that may not necessarily mean i buy those companies because other people may have that information and the valuation of those companies might reflect that already right so those are examples now the second question this was an idea to say okay i can use macroeconomics to come and understand top down understanding the second key idea is why should i invest in equities at all right this is a simpler question i'm assuming aap log sab yahan pe hain to ye question hum sab ke liye answer already ho hi chuka hai मुझे ज्यादा इसमें कुछ बोलने की जरूरत नहीं है बट इक्विटीज अलाउ अस अ शेयर इन बिजनेस ओनरशिप ऑफ ग्रेट बिजनेसेस मैं पेंट्स का बिजनेस बना नहीं सकता इंडिया में बट मैं एशियन पेंट्स के साथ पूरा साइकिल राइड कर सकता था राइट right? या कर सकता हूं मैं बैंक बना नहीं सकता इंडिया में बट मैं किसी बैंक के साथ पूरा इंडिया का फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेस का साइकिल राइड कर सकता था इट इज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू पार्टिसिपेट इन द ग्रोथ स्टोरी ऑफ इंडिया एंड द कंपनी इक्विटीज आर द बेस्ट वे टू वेल्थ फॉर वेल्थ क्रिएशन एंड इन्फ्लेशन को बीट करने का सस्टेन तरीका आपके पास सिर्फ इक्विटीज है फिक्स डिपॉजिट विल नेवर अलाउ अस टू डू दैट राइट सो दैट समथिंग वी हैव टू कीप इन माइंड नाउ द की मिथ्स इन इन इन्वेस्टिंग इन इक्विटी अ लॉट ऑफ अस वुड प्रोबेबली फील दैट यू नो वेन आई हैव अ लॉट ऑफ मनी आई विल स्टार्ट इन्वेस्टिंग एंड देन कवर अप लेटर ऑन we also do the exact opposite which is basically saying that you know it gives me quick money so let me just make money quickly you can't make quick money also right you can make good amounts of money but you can't make sorry you can aisa nahi hota ki hum paisa double karte chalenge roz right there is a belief that equity is too risky which is wrong what is risky is our behavior while investing humko koi bolta hai ki ye wala stock khareed lo hum khareed lete hain that is a risky behavior the stock does not know we are buying it if we have researched well enough it is not risky right i don't know where to invest which is precisely why we need this framework agar hum thoda sa framework ko use karenge we read a lot of things we read newspapers we read all these articles if we can link some of these things together right and usually this is simpler to do for the longer term very short term linkages are very difficult because sometimes you know prices are already uh you know in line with uh, with those there's an expectation that market already builds in around it right but over a medium to longer term you can have that expectation that plays out with respect to investing right uh there's a couple of quick examples of early investing agar aap 25 ki age pe investing shuru karte hain versus aap 30 ki age pe investing shuru karte hain aur aap har saal 1 lakh rupaye invest karte hain 1 lakh rupee every year growing at 15% then by the time you reach the age of 50 one person has invested for 25 years one person has invested for 20 years the difference is nearly you know 1.2 crore here and uh, nearly 2.5 crore here right so there's a double difference at the end of 50 years of age look at it the other way if i have to start at the age of 25 and i invest with a return of 15% i end up with about 2 and 1/2 crore to get to the same amount of 2 and 1/2 crore if i am starting at the age of 30 to get to the same number of 2 and 1/2 crore i need a return of 21% over this period 20 saal tak 21% return nikalna zaruri hai right now there aren't too many fund managers globally who would boast of 20 year returns of 21% i think warren buffett would be one berkshire hathaway right india mein kuch ek do fund managers honge jinhone ye return is tarah ka return nikala hai over a 20 year period maybe rakesh junjun wala for example maybe some fund managers might have done that uh but a uh, normal person like me or you to to do that return expectation is uh, is difficult because one bad year and it it pushes up us back significantly right it's much simpler to do a simple disciplined investing if i like a company argument say i like hdfc bank i like dr reddy's labs i like infosys i like tcs i like kotak mahindra bank i like mnm i like tata motors any company that i like basically right these not withstanding it's a very simple thing to actually just systematically with discipline put aside some money in those companies there is no real benefit in timing it right and that is where wealth gets created the risk in equities right if you stay invested for 3 years you take multiple periods and this is a global study that will come up which will say that agar aap 3 saal ke liye invest karte hain to 87% of the times you will make money positive returns honge 13% of the times you could have negative returns if you took take multiple 3 year periods in the past and you try and analyze that data if you're doing it for 5 years then 90% of the times you will have positive returns and 10% negative 
if you are invested in equities for 10 years and good equities that, that doesn't mean i randomly go and buy any company shares because that can go to zero but let's say i invest in india's market as a whole right nifty index mein main kharidna shuru karta hu aur 10 saal kharidta hu to india mein at least the data proves that if you have invested for a 10 year period let's say i invested on 1st jan 2011 and i kept it till 1st jan 2021 or i started on 1st feb 2011 and i kept it till 1st feb 2021 any 10 year period that i take i would not have lost money right so the longer you are able to stay in equities the more your chances of positive returns as well as wealth creation right that's something we have to keep in mind right so the two key themes are i have to invest early and regularly the earlier i can start the better it is right and again i think uh, there are products available which allow you to start with small amounts uh, in direct equities as well and i can invest in equities for the long run i need to invest in equities for the long run there is massive wealth creation that can happen in equities in the long run this is nifty's chart in india right and this is sort of monthly chart that weekly chart that you will see over the period of 95 when nifty started first 5 years obviously we were not a mature market but 2003 onwards hamara proper ek cycle shuru hua is cycle ke multiple part but as a theme we have basically seen an up moving cycle right also remember this is a log scale ye log scale chart hai matlab 1000 se 2000 ka jo difference hai which is a 100% return you will also see the same distance between 10000 and 20000 so maybe return wise you see the same amount of distance between two levels so aap chart ka movement utna agar dekhenge to utna zyada bada lag nahi raha hai but hum practically 1000 nifty level se shuru hue the aur hum aaj ke date mein 15000 ke level pe hain which is a 15 times movement in the market over a 17 year period right individual stocks have gone up 100 200 times in india but practically there is a classic case of wealth creation that has happened in india over the longer run if you have the had the patience to stay invested and even if you bought at the peak of 2008 cycle and stayed invested aap same level wapas se 2010 11 mein dekh chuke the aur us level ke upar aap aaram se paisa bana chuke hote ab tak all you need is patience you pick up any 10 year period in this market you would have made money any 10 year period starting anywhere right so wealth creation in the long run is a complete uh, game that equities give you there are some company examples i want to show and again not a recommendation to buy any of these but these are fascinating companies that have generated so much wealth that if you just kept buying some amount of this every month every year they would have probably created a retirement kitty for a lot of us. There are multiple examples. I'll just use some of the household names. Asian Paints, right? Adjusted for all of this, the stock was at 20 rupees in 2002. It's at 2600 at this point of time, right? That's 130 times in this period. Forget all that. In 2009, the stock was available at 60 rupees, right? Approximately 60 to 70 rupees. From there, it has gone up 40 times in the last 10 years right and that's that's just the power of a good company that keeps generating wealth for you over a period of time look at kotak mahindra bank right the stock was practically adjusted for everything available at about uh, 3 to 4 rupees here in 2002 did really well corrected because this was a financial crisis but then continued to do well right and even in this this was available at 50 and you're now at uh, you know you touched 2000 just recently that's also 40 times right uh, standard disclaimer the the presentation is being organized by kotak securities uh, but you look at any bank for that context you look at hdfc bank you'll see similar stories you'll see look at access bank you'll see similar stories banking obviously is a tricky segment because if you uh, if you end up buying the wrong bank then there is a problem uh, which all of us would be aware of but the idea i'm trying to say is that in the long run there is a massive possibility of wealth creation that can happen we already saw dixon technologies in this context right now what are the next steps right hamare liye agle steps kya hain agar hum is journey mein aage badhna chahte hain to hum kya karenge start understanding key macro themes in india india mein kya play out karne wala hai agle kuch saal mein right one of the key things india has done in this budget 
for example and this is why this 2021 budget was a very important uh, landmark in that context is we said we will focus on growth and how we always say we will focus on growth but how is that evident is because we said ki hamara jo fiscal deficit ka ek target hota hai which is the government spending versus government's revenue generally hum us number ko 3% of gdp pe rokne ki koshish karte the we tried to kind of control it around 3% of gdp this year the government came out and said that in 2022 this number will be 6.8% of gdp right this is a deficit number which means expenditure is greater than income which means the government is spending if the government is spending there are ancillary sectors that start doing well they have also said that fiscal deficit will not go to 3% for a mul- for multiple years in fact they have given a target ki 2026 mein 4.5% of gdp ka hamara target hai to aap agar ek simple calculation karenge to india ka gdp is uh, is 2 crore crore राइट दो करोड़ करोड़ का हमारा जीडीपी का नंबर है टोटल और अगर हमारा डेफिसिट तीन परसेंट होता था पहले तो लगभग तीन परसेंट ऑफ जीडीपी यूज टू बी अप्रोक्सीमेटली अबाउट सिक्स टू सेवन लाख करोड़ राइट छह से सात लाख करोड़ के आसपास का फिजिकल डेफिसिट होता था गवर्नमेंट यह बोल रही है कि हम तीन की जगह इसको साढ़े चार परसेंट पांच पर रखेंगे विच मीन्स एक्स्ट्रा दो स्पेंडिंग This extra two percent spending means two percent of the GDP, which itself grow kar raha hai. But two percent of the GDP in India is about four to five lakh crore annually. This is the extra annual spending that we are saying will happen now. To give you an idea, our total infrastructure budget is about five lakh crore in one year. If we are spending extra, we can double our budget's infrastructure budget in any of the years. right our healthcare spending is minuscule our education spending is minuscule you put this number anywhere any any segment to give you an idea mn rega allotment every year is 1 lakh crore 1 lakh crore ka allotment mn rega pe hota hai hum 5 guna kar sakte hain usko agar hum ek saal decide kar le ki sirf mn rega mein spending karenge i am not di- discussing the merits of this all i am trying to say is that one key macro theme in india is government spending right and consequently infrastructure rural uh, you know movements and all of that will play out so this is likely to play out other themes could play out you could see electric vehicles as a theme play out hamara oil pe dependence bahut zyada hai agar oil prices wapas upar jayenge to hame problem hoga right so you would expect that the government would want to reduce that dependence on oil by increasing electric vehicles right look at sectors where policy making will be favorable what will this result in i will not give you ideas here just think about it ki agar hum aaj ke environment ko improve karne ki koshish karte hain in the next 10 years if we try to improve where we are in the next 10 years what sectors will be favorable and then keep a keep an eye on good companies in those sectors and invest regularly in those don't try to time them too much राइट आप अच्छे स्टॉक्स को टाइम करेंगे कभी मिलेंगे ही नहीं इससे बेटर यह है कि जस्ट डिसाइड अ प्लान ऑफ एक्शन दैट यू नो यू टू इन्वेस्ट समथिंग सिस्टमेटिकली एवरी ईयर कीप बाइंग दैट व्हेन यू गेट अ करेक्शन यू कैन बाय मोर राइट बट दीज आर कंपनीज दैट विल नॉट क्लोज इन द नेक्स्ट फाइव सेवन टेन ईयर्स राइट नेस्टले बंद नहीं होगा एच बंद नहीं होगा एच बैंक बंद नहीं होगा एशियन पेंट्स बंद नहीं होगा right these are businesses that have done well they have survived well they are strong businesses i'm not saying you go and invest in these names i'm just using those names as an example that we have to keep in mind those are our steps that we have to follow that is broadly it from me in the discussion i think um, hopefully this was useful that's where i will end the presentation for the day and i will open up the floor for questions and answers right so give me a second let me just look at some uh, some questions and uh let us try and understand some of these questions i have uh, some of these questions that have come to me let me just open up these as well and start trying to look at them How to choose a stock for short term gain? I would suggest कि ये जो हमने पूरा आज डिस्कस किया है ये शॉर्ट टर्म गेम्स के लिए काम आएगा नहीं शॉर्ट टर्म गेम्स आर इंसिडेंटल 
it is very difficult to to plan for short term gains uh it looks very uh, very attractive uh, but generally uh aap agar theme ko leke play karenge to wo zyada and when i say short term you know you can you can wait for some dips in certain stocks which are strong stocks and then play aapko opportunity mil jayega sabhi stocks mein jahan pe aap decent return bana sakte hain agar aap short term bhi check kar rahe hain for but you need to be careful that you don't get into a point where risk reward is completely skewed right people try and chase stocks when they have started running up a lot right sbi came out with great results uh, in january right the stock in january went up from 350 to 430 people invested a lot more at 400 420 430 then you know the stock actually last week was available at 320 and 320 se 360 wo ek week mein ho gaya right so you have to identify good stocks and wait for them to give an opportunity but remember koi zaruri nahi hai 320 se 360 ho jayega ye ab ho gaya isliye hum bol pa rahe hain we are saying it because we have seen it happen it's quite possible that 320 could have gone to 280 so don't go just by the idea that i have to make money in one week that may or may not happen but buy a stock that you are comfortable that you know you can say that okay if i hold it for a longer term that is good right okay individual stock uh, views i am not sure i would be tracking a lot of them so i will try and see if i can uh, do that call and put buying strategy i won't be able to cover here uh how much return should we expect on a monthly investment of uh, of 1 lakh capital so in general you know your equity markets over a period give you 15 to 20% return right agar aap theek se compound kar rahe hain isko to 15 se 20% ka aap annual return bana rahe hain uh obviously you have to be careful with risk and reward and if you can manage some things well then you know sometimes you can make more and then if you can manage risk and reward better there then your potential can increase a little bit par sustained basis pe isse bahut zyada nikalne ke liye aapko risk ko increase karna padega and wo increase aap tab kar sakte hain jab aapke paas capital ho right so we read in newspapers about you know rakesh junjunwala did not become rakesh junjunwala in 2 years or 3 years he's been doing it for 35 years right and we don't know about the initial part of the journey wo hame pata nahi chalta hai hame unke bare mein tab pata chalta hai jab wo rakesh junjun wala ban chuke hain right and now we know that he made so much money in crisel or so much money in titan but we don't know the initial days of uh, of what his returns were and what is important to understand is that even for him risk management is a very very critical thing and once you are investing my sense is if you can make 20 to 25% per annum this is remarkably good right there is no short term bullet around this yahan pe koi shortcut nahi hai and unfortunately stock markets or commodity markets ko dekh ke logo ko aisa feel aata hai ki these are get rich quick schemes par usme problem ye hota hai ki uh, aap uh, aap uh, it is also get poor quick scheme if you try to take too much risk in order to get rich quickly it doesn't work right so understand that stock markets are an amalgamation of lot of people getting together so it's important for us to understand ki hamare uh, paas aisa koi edge nahi hai jisse ki hum baki sab ko bahut substantially beat kar payenge right main aap koi bhi for that matter we are not sitting with any insider information that is playing out it we can't have that legally that is not allowed right and uh, for all practical purposes agar main companies ko baith ke dekh raha hu to wahi wahi companies ko sab log dekh rahe hain to aisa kya alag dekh payenge hum other than looking at a slightly longer term view point which most people don't have in fact you can beat most people in the market if you can just have a slightly longer term view point right i would tend to think that uh, if you are investing uh, Um, you know monthly i don't think you should uh, track your returns too much uh, especially if you're investing i mean if you're trading then that's a different uh, game altogether and that's a different mindset that is needed there and what i have spoken about today may not really relate to trading at all uh, but from an investing perspective aapka return expectation 15 20% annualized se zyada nahi rahega if you're able to make more then you take steps to essentially you know uh, de-risk yourself because this can go away very quickly as well i'll also explain you some very simple concepts here right 100 pe invest kiya 200 chala gaya how much return did you make 100% par agar yahan pe invested rahe to minus 50% pe wapas 100 a jayega 
राइट बिकॉज कंपाउंडिंग प्लेस राइट अगर आपने स्टॉक सौ रुपए पर खरीदा और वो पच्चीस रुपए चला गया तो दैट्स माइनस सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट लॉस फॉर इट टू गो बैक टू हंड्रेड इट हैज टू गो अप थ्री हंड्रेड परसेंट प्लस थ्री हंड्रेड परसेंट राइट रिमेंबर दिस डोंट जंप इन टू स्टॉक्स दैट हैव फॉलन अ लॉट जस्ट बिकॉज दे फॉलन अ लॉट राइट बाय गुड क्वालिटी कंपनीज एंड स्टिक टू देम once i have select there's a question that says once i have selected a stock for long term how do i know when to buy like i would not want to buy it at all time high then then the price drops so as i said i think if you like a company let's say i like a company company xyz right and i'm going to invest it for the next 10 years right mai isme 10 saal tak rehne wala hu to mujhe kya farak padne wala hai ki agar mai aaj usko 100 pe khareed raha hu kal 110 pe khareed raha hu parso 90 pe khareed raha hu अगले दिन 80 पे खरीद रहा हूँ एंड मे बी देन आई बाई इट एट वन ट्वेंटी अगेन आई जस्ट रेगुलरली कीप डूइंग इट आई मीन इफ आई जस्ट डन दैट विथ यू नो ऑनेस्टली एशियन पेंट्स ऑल दिस वाइल रिगार्डलेस ऑफ ऑल यहाँ पे ये ऑल टाइम हाई था 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 इफ यू इफ यू जस्ट कैप बाइंग रेगुलरली यू वेड मेड टन यू नो टन्स ऑफ मनी सो ऑल टाइम हाई इज ऑल टाइम हाई टूडे एंड इन अ वेरी शॉर्ट टाइम फ्रेम यू कुड सी अ करेक्शन right if you had bought in 2020 february it was all time high right and we would have felt okay all it just got crushed if you just held on most stocks have recovered most stocks have recovered and actually gone higher right so uh, from that perspective i think this this concept of all time high doesn't uh, work how to choose uh, a share based on fundamental of companies rather than technical for long term investment horizon of 5 10 years or more as i said i think you can go down this process uh where you choose on what is the sectors you are comfortable with based on the macro environment within the company then of course there is more research you can come up and do with which is your you know stock research jahan pe aap valuation methodologies laga sakte hain there are various methodologies that play out there is relative valuation you can value company based on price to earnings price to book there is discounted cash flow valuation that you can try and learn and work about but these are fundamental tenets of understanding business kya kar raha hai right acha grow kar raha hai nahi kar raha hai. even just looking at plain numbers will give you an idea that okay this is a business that consistently grows so that's something that you can you can kind of uh, look at from a longer term perspective in this case if a business is good i think the fundamentals and technicals will basically all of uh, you know all of them will meet There's a question that I am a beginner in investing and I have lost some money in the past one year. How do you select a stock that can give assured returns? You can't. Unfortunately, if I knew how to select a stock that could give assured returns, uh, the only thing assured in life is fixed deposit return, right? And usme risk nahi hota hai. Jahan pe risk aaya, wahan pe assured uh, return chala jayega. There is no concept of assured return. What you can believe is that in the longer run, if you are investing in good companies, you can probably you know hope that. they will not lose money for you and uh, your chances of growing with their growth is much much better much much higher but you have to go with trusted names obviously these are not names which will uh, which will generally give you 200% return double nahi ho jayega ekdam se par half bhi nahi ho jayega and that's more important i think in in investing one of the key things you have to remember is that you have to preserve your capital that's tenet 1 इन्वेस्टिंग वन जीरो वन इज अगर मैं सौ रुपए से शुरू कर रहा हूं इफ आई एम स्टार्टिंग विथ हंड्रेड रुपीज आई नीड टू एंश्योर दैट हंड्रेड स्टेज आई नीड टू ओनली टेक रिस्क विच आई कैन टेक इफ हंड्रेड गोज देन देर इज नो रिटर्न यू कैन यू नो वट एवर रिटर्न ऑन जीरो इज जीरो राइट सो अंडरस्टैंड दैट या आई थिंक दोज आर द क्वेश्चन आई हैव विच आर ब्रॉडली देर so yeah i think that's broadly it from me i think we are also out of time uh, do keep investing in in uh, indian equity markets i think this is a great fascinating time to be in but do remember that uh, it's it's important to always realize that risk and return are two sides of the same coin and they will go hand in hand bina risk ke return nahi hoga aur ज्यादा रिटर्न के लिए अगर मैं ज्यादा रिस्क ले रहा हूं दैट कुड क्रिएट अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर माय कैपिटल आई नीड टू कीप दिस इन माइंड 
sometimes it is better to stick to good large companies and do investing regularly rather than trying uh, to find the next uh, one other very interesting uh, question i keep getting that you know which is the next asian paints and which is the next hdfc bank ye bada common question hai kaun sa bank agla hdfc bank ban jayega kaun sa bank agla kotak mahindra bank ban jayega right uh, all these companies like asian paints kotak mahindra bank hdfc bank they grow at 15 20% per year right if you hold them for a four year period kotak bank will be the next kotak bank after four years because they are at 500 they will go to 1000 right their sales will double in four years to try and find out which small bank will become kotak bank is not going to work to try and find out which small paint company will become asian paints will not work it's acha asian paints se khareed lo char saal mein double ho jayega business i can't comment about stock prices but they have been exhibiting that four year kind of a cycle where these companies double their sales in four years typically or profits in four years and um, that's a much simpler theme to play than to try and find the next station paints or the next hdfc or kotak bank which typically is a is a very risky uh, risky uh, maneuver right okay so that's broadly it from me i think uh, uh, that is where i will uh, i will stop with the session thanks a lot uh, for uh, being a very patient audience and i hope uh, i was able to answer most of the questions kitki anything else that you think is there on the questions panel oh uh, no i guess that's it uh, for today so um, guys uh, we've come to the end of today's session uh, thank you so much uh, piyush for such an insightful and uh, educative webinar and i'm sure everybody must have enjoyed listening to the process and the steps uh, that you mentioned uh, that uh, we need to use before selecting a stock Uh, so i thank you for taking out uh, your valuable time and being with us today My also pleasure. would like to, thank you also would like to thank all the attendees for uh, their participation thank you so much guys thank you thank you thank you have a good evening everyone and please stay safe everyone yes thank you thank you